Ahoy Captains, it's Vaz again with another video from World of Warships Legends. And today we have a let's play in the new ship Cavour. This is the Italian Tier 4 battleship. And in this match we're on the map Estuary in a game of domination. This is one of our first matches in the Cavour, fresh out of getting it in an early access crate. One of those Italian uh, battleship early access crates with the extremely low percentage drops. But uh, we won't talk about that here. Instead, we're going to talk about uh, how you might want to play these ships. There's a, always a constant stream of complaints about uh, how Italian battleships don't have an accuracy commander and how you can't play them without an accuracy commander. Well, I say bully to that. And I'm going to show you how to play this Italian battleship without an accuracy commander. Now, unfortunately, we have the middle spawn and we are in a slow tier 4 battleship. And so it's going to take us a little bit to get over to where we need to go. We had a quick look at our mini-map at the beginning of the match, and we saw that there was only one battleship supporting the uh, eastern flank over by the Delta Cap. And so that's where we're going to head to try and support uh, the rest of our teammates over there. Now this is a tier 3 and 4 match, and uh, we're pretty heavily armored here. So we're not too worried about uh, taking incoming fire as we make our way over there. If we were uh, perhaps in an Iowa in a tier 7 match, I uh, wouldn't be sailing broadside like this. Uh, definitely not for very long in any case. There are also carriers in this match. And we were uh, spotted by the uh, enemy carrier unfortunately. So that's why we were uh, getting shot at. And then someone was able to spot our attacker. And look at that, it's that tier 3 Italian battleship. The Algeri, something like that. We need an Italian person to like clarify all these names for us. Come on, somebody, please, make a video. It'll go viral, I swear. We did return fire on him, but the results were not very good because guess what? These Italian battleships are not snipers. You notice that I didn't hit the brakes. I didn't try to, you know, set up camp and try to snipe from uh, the very uh, back portion of the map from the very furthest reach of my range. No, I kept on sailing forward because that's what you're supposed to do in these ships. What you want to do is you want to get up right nice and close. You see now we have this uh, fair gear to shoot at. We did uh, have AP loaded unfortunately but we do still get a knock on him. He's not that far away from us. We can still put some hurt on him. And we did swap over to HE because that's who our uh, main target is going to be. We're not damage hunting, we're trying to win the freaking game, and you win the freaking game by hunting the destroyers and shooting at the destroyers. It doesn't matter what ship you're in, you kill the destroyers first, and then that opens everything up for the rest of your team to go in and get the caps. And it also instills a bit of confidence in the, the battleships on your team that uh, may be less experienced and not comfortable pushing forward when there's a destroyer around. Now when it comes to taking on destroyers in a battleship, there are two things at play. One, know your enemy. Being that that was a fair good, we know that uh, his torpedo range is fairly, relatively short. And two, we want to anticipate where he might be and angle our ship properly so that we won't be fully broadside to a full salvo of his torps. If we're pointed towards him, or thereabouts, you know, you can actually turn your ship if you have to. We'll be able to uh, avoid most of his torps, or in fact, maybe all of them. And it's not the end of the world if you take a torp or two. Like, you have heals in a battleship. Use those heals. That's what they're there for. And speaking of there, look who's there. The Fairgood again. We had HE loaded, and goodbye Fairgood. Oh boy. That was nasty. Isn't that such a great feeling as a battleship captain? When you can turn the tables and dev strike a destroyer, you know, usually it's them uh, launching a full salvo of torps at you and dev striking you, but uh, not this time. And just in case he did get torps off, we uh, point their bow towards him, keep sailing ahead. But uh, Alja GG is uh, pushing forward broadside to us. So we had uh, swapped over to AP to uh, take advantage of his broadside. And uh, I think our secondaries are actually hitting him uh, more often than uh, our main battery. Uh, which is, you know, that's uh, kind of to be expected, and that's why we are this uh, close. 
because our secondaries are putting in some serious work on him. Holy smokes. That's what I am loving about these Italian battleships. Their secondaries are formidable. And you are going to need them to be. Unfortunately, uh, these shotgun blasts are uh, kind of common with these Italian battleships. It's just something you got to get used to. You know, you're not going to be uh, dev striking people without an accuracy commander. But you're going to make up for it in other ways. You're going to make up for it with a shorter reload. You're going to make up for it with increased hit points, increased maneuverability, and overall increased survivability. Your risk of catching fire and flooding and all that good stuff, that's going to be reduced too. And so it's just a, a different mentality. I mean, why would you want to play every single ship the same? You know, if you want to sit in the back and just snipe, well, just, just play your American battleships. But if you want to get out there and have some fun, you want to get into one of these uh, Italian battleships. Boy, oh boy. I don't know if you've seen it yet. But your boy Vaz had himself a good old time and ranked one versus one in uh, the tier four uh, matches this past weekend. We took out the Cavour and we threw ourselves a perfect game, 15 and 0 all the way through ranked. And more importantly, I feel like I just had a blast doing it. Had I lost some matches, it wouldn't have been a big deal. I would have uh, just been having fun. This Cavour has a uh, very solid armor, very good survivability. And really, it just allows you to outlast your opponent. It's just a matter of time before one of those shotgun blasts hit home. That uh, Farragut can attest to that. Not every salvo is going to be uh, shooting all over the place. And you know, if it is a little bit frustrating for you, you don't have to choose all the uh, anti-dispersion skills. You could maybe substitute running with scissors with wheel to rebuild. We'll talk more about that in a second when we finally get a break in the action and we can uh, get our commander build up on the screen. But for me, I think the main reason why you're seeing a lot of shotgun blasts in this match is that I did take Running with Scissors as a legendary skill. And in the first and only starting upgrade slot, I skipped over aiming systems. I went with a full secondary build and I took the secondary battery mod to increase the range of my secondaries and better their dispersion. And that's because when you get within range of a target, these secondaries can really rip destroyers, really rip cruisers, and they can do a number on the battleships too. So you can fight it all you want, you can try and uh, put a dispersion build on these battleships, but I think you're fighting an uphill battle. And that's in the sense that you're kind of negating this uh, line's strengths. You don't have to take my advice, but what I can say is that this Italian battleship line is going to give you an opportunity to improve your brawling skills. Well, this match is uh, about to wrap up here, and uh, look at where we are. We've sailed all the way uh, from our middle spawn of the map, helped cap the Delta Cap, and now we're chasing down the carrier. Speaking of this carrier, lining them up, shots out, and boom goes the dynamite. See what I'm talking about? You don't need no dispersion, Commander. Two death strikes. Count them. One, two. Both in the same match with the Cavour, without a Dispersion Commander. Without any Dispersion skills, even. Okay, fine, we did use Cunningham as an inspiration. Which is a perfect uh, segue to uh, put up our Commander on the screen. We're using Paulo de Revel. With that aforementioned Cunningham inspiration, as well as an inspiration from Von Hipper. We chose all the brawling skills, except for Brawler, ironically. And we probably should have, I don't know. I didn't take it because I hadn't unlocked the range upgrade yet for the Cavour. And I think uh, choosing it would have put its range at like 10 or 11. So that was just a little too short for my liking. So that's the end of this match. We sped up the last little bit there just because. And so what do you guys think about uh, these ships? Are you embracing their brawling nature or are you uh, fighting against it and trying to turn them into uh, snipers? Let me know in the comments down below. And I'm sorry for being so opinionated on it. Normally I'm pretty diplomatic when it comes to uh, hot button topics, but if calling it like it is even helps just one person, I think it'll be worth it. As for the match, we ended up with a respectable 62,000 in damage, three sinkings, which uh, could have been probably four or five, and we had a whole crap load of ribbons in that match too, including uh, shooting down a ton of planes. Well, I hope you guys did like that video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. 
If you want to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. And as always, take care of yourself and do what makes you happy.